Hello everyone and welcome to Serpente Sunday for September 12th, 2021. I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I am joined for this introduction by Normal. He is one of our corn snakes from Port City Pet. He was produced by Joe Phelan and Normal is not the subject of this video. Normal was just being persistent wanting out of his enclosure so I let him out for a little while and he's been out exercising and he joined me for this introduction, but I don't want him to distract me from the very important material that we're gonna go over because it's about our carpet python, Rosalie, and it's about a health crisis that she had this year. And I wanna make sure that I don't make any mistakes as I give you all this information. So I'm gonna go put Normal away back into his living habitat and we will get right into Rosalie's story after that. Rosalie is home from the hospital after having some follow-up diagnostics on Thursday, September 9th, and then having surgery yesterday, Friday, September 10th. And she spent the night and I went and picked her up today. So I'm quite sure that she is going to be happy to be home. I don't know if you can see that she's got sutures in right here. And yes, she's having some issues with dyslexia for the first time since I've had her. And that's because she became terribly dehydrated. She was unable to eat or drink because her esophagus was being compressed by the major vessel leaving her heart. So that'll be explained in the video, but I just want to get her put back. She's been at the hospital three days. I'm sure she's glad to be home and she'll be happy to be in her own enclosure. I'm going to start with some background information for you about Rosalie. Rosalie is a West Papuan carpet python. She is a female and her species is Morelia spilota. They're indigenous to Indonesia. This particular West Papuan carpet python was hatched on August 13th, 2018, and she was produced by Roy Stewart at Tierra de Morelia. He used to live here in Colorado where I am, and he recently moved to Florida not too long ago. But I have several snakes from Roy, and all of them are doing exceptionally well. Rosalie, as you will see in this video, just had a structural anomaly that she was born with that we had to get taken care of. And she has been with me since November 10th, 2018. I want to talk you through the significant events that occurred that led us to the surgery that Rosalie had yesterday. The first thing that happened was a regurgitation event and that was followed by some behavior changes. That led me to take her in for a veterinary exam where we did some initial diagnostics that didn't really show anything. So I subsequently I fed her again and she regurgitated again. So that led us to additional veterinary diagnostics. That led us to an exploratory surgery with a definitive diagnosis of what was going on. Then that led us to what we had to do in order to treat that. And now she's pending recovery at home. Let me take you through some history about her and then the timeline of how all of these events took place. So per her breeder, she was a slow starter. And she, that just means that she didn't eat right away. It just took a little while to get her going on food. Now, since she's been here, which has been almost three years, she's always only eaten very small prey items and refused large items. So even as a two and three year old, she was only wanting to eat like hopper mice or very small mice. And then she's just been a smaller size than her clutch mates ever since the beginning. And I have two of her female clutch mates here and they're eating normally with no health issues and they're about three times her size. And then I've spoken to the breeder and he also has a hold back from the same clutch who is doing well with no issues. So now let's go to the timeline of how all of these things 
happened and led me to surgery with her. In January of 2021, she ate her first adult mouse, which I would consider was a large mouse. And after that, she had a significant change in her behavior. She had increased hiding, reduced activity. She exhibited no hunting behavior, and she started to exhibit some unusual body posture, but just in one spot um, in the first third of her body. So she didn't exhibit any hunting behavior or any indication that she was hungry for four months. And then in May of 2021, she started actively hunting again, and I gave her three hopper mice. She regurgitated those within 12 hours. So I immediately called the veterinarian and got an appointment for her. And on May 26, she went in for a veterinary exam and diagnostics. So that included radiographs and the x-ray films didn't show anything. And then we also did virus testing and that all came back normal. We did a fecal check, which was normal. So nothing abnormal was noted in, on this initial visit. She was placed on antibiotics just as a precaution and sent home. Now this is the unusual body posture that I was talking about. I've got it circled here in yellow. So about six weeks after that veterinary exam, she exhibited hunting behavior again and I fed her again, a very small um, mouse and she regurgitated it within 12 hours and she started to get into this position where just at this juncture between the first third and the middle third of her body, she would start to contort it like she was trying to get comfortable. And she would get in this position very frequently, just as you see here in this picture. So between July and August, she ate a couple of meals. She was exhibiting hunting behavior about once a month. So she was offered a meal in July and one in August, and she readily ate. She was clearly hungry. She did her target training just as she's been trained to. She did very well with that, and she took her reinforcement, which was food. But within 12 hours, she would regurgitate the meal. And we're just talking about two meals here. I didn't continually do this to her, but we needed to figure out what was going on. So in August, after she took her meal, I watched her and she struggled to swallow. She struggled to get the meal, which was only a fuzzy mouse, not even a hopper, but she struggled to get that down to her stomach and it just would not go past a certain point in her esophagus. And it was around that same spot where she was contorting her body in that strange shape. So I immediately called the vet and we got her an appointment for a subsequent exam and um, more diagnostics. So on September 9th, she went in and she had a radiographic barium study. And so barium is um, used in barium sulfate as a radiographic contrast agent. And it's especially used in digestive tract studies. So the barium is ingested, people drink it, but in this case, Rosalie was given the barium with a tube down her throat. And then you take radiographs and you look at those x-ray films and you can see where the barium is moving through the digestive tract. Well, in her case, it was not passing down the esophagus at all. And our veterinarian was able to manually massage a little bit of the barium down her esophagus, but only a very small amount. And Rosalie regurgitated the barium within just a few minutes of being given that. So that led us to no other option but exploratory surgery because we needed to know what was going on. The other radiographs had not shown any mass or anything unusual. And then this barium study didn't show us anything other than that nothing was passing down the esophagus past a certain point. So on Friday, September 10th, she had exploratory surgery and Dr. Pfaff discovered that the esophagus was a trap, entrapped and being compressed by the main artery that leaves the heart. So this was a very unusual occurrence. It's nothing I had heard of before, and it was nothing that Dr. Pfaff had encountered before. So it was just a structural anomaly, and that was repaired. I'll talk a little bit about how she did that in a minute. And that is what's in this photograph is an actual photograph from Rosalie's surgery. And I'm blowing that up in the video. So if you don't wanna see that, you might fast forward two or three minutes in the video because I have a blown up photograph of the surgery and then I have actual um, video of a few seconds of the surgery. So this is a photo from during Rosalie's surgery and this is credited to Dr. Liza Pfaff and her staff at Critter Care Animal Hospital. And what you see here 
is the major artery from Rosalie's heart is passing over the esophagus and it's compressing the esophagus. And obviously when Rosalie eats, the esophagus is not able to expand to allow food or anything through because that artery from the heart is preventing that. So if you look at the photograph, the yellow arrows are pointing to the esophagus, and that's that larger tubular structure that's almost white in color. And then the red arrow is pointing towards a, a major artery that leaves the heart. It's called the great vessel, and it should not be passing over the esophagus like that. The esophagus should be what's in the forefront of the picture and you should not see that artery. It should be below the esophagus from this point of view. And so um, this structural anomaly would have been something that occurred during her embryonic development. It was a birth defect. She was born or hatched with that and it likely caused minor issues until she grew larger and older and started to have to eat larger food items. And it's something that would have been fatal if it wasn't corrected by surgery. Now, this is a photo that I got off Google Images and it is credited to Murray State University. It's the best one I could find of the, a normal esophagus. And as you see, that artery from the heart is not passing over the esophagus in this photo. This is a video from Rosalie's actual surgery. You can see her heart beating in the lower right. And then again, the esophagus is that lighter colored and larger tubular structure that's adjacent to the heart. And then the pinkish tubular structure that's crossing over the esophagus is actually, um, it's called the great vessel, but it's a major artery that leaves the heart. And it should not be passing over the esophagus like that. So it's actually compressing the esophagus. It's not allowing the esophagus to expand when she tries to pass food down it. And you can see all the vascularization um, from that heart vessel that's kind of over the esophagus. So what Dr. Pfaff had to do, because you can't cut that heart artery, she had to cut the esophagus in half and unthread it from that heart vessel and then she had to sew the esophagus back together where it is supposed to be. And so now we have to wait and see and make sure that that esophagus is gonna hold together and then it's gonna heal without leaking, it's gonna heal without scar tissue and that she's going to be able to pass food through it. All right, so today, which is September 11th, 2021, she was sent home for recovery. I went and picked her up, and this is our plan. She's on injectable antibiotics for 15 doses. So she's on ceftazidime every 48 hours for 15 doses. So that is for the next month. And that is to prevent any infection because as you could see in the video, she was opened up and her heart was exposed to the air and all of those other internal organs, the esophagus, the trachea, et cetera, were exposed to the air. And even though that was in a sterile surgical environment, we still wanna give her antibiotics to prevent any kind of infection. And also things that go down the esophagus are not sterile. And so if the esophagus is leaking anything, we don't want that to cause any kind of an infection. So she's gonna be on antibiotics for a month. We are gonna reintroduce feeding very gradually, and we are gonna start with a liquid diet in two weeks. And that's gonna be via a stomach tube, and I'll probably make another video about that when we get to that point, if everything is still going well. And then she will have suture removal and a follow-up radiographic study with barium in two months. I really want to thank the staff at Critter Care Animal Hospital. They are fantastic. Dr. Liza Pfaff has done surgery on other snakes for us. She treats all of our snakes and they're just a phenomenal hospital. They treat all of the animals there with such respect and kindness. They're excellent with reptiles, very knowledgeable, and she just does a fantastic job with my snakes. So I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. They are a fear-free certified veterinary practice, 
and I'm a certified fear-free animal trainer. I'm also certified in the fear-free veterinary program and the fear-free equine program. And so I'm happy to be able to take my snakes to a fear-free certified veterinary practice. If you wanna find out more about Fear Free, please go to fearfreepets.com. They do actually have certification programs for lay people. They have Fear Free certification programs for people who are just pet owners. They also have a Fear Free groomers program, a Fear Free pet sitters program, and a Fear Free shelters program. In addition to the Fear Free veterinary program, the Fear Free trainers program, the Fear Free equine program, and there's a Fear Free parrot program. I want to thank everyone for watching. If you have questions, I'm sure some might come up, please contact me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com or you can reach me via my website at behavioreducation.org. This condition that Rosalie has may or may not be rare. It's rarely been reported. I could not find anything in a Google Scholar search about this condition in reptiles. Neither could my vet and neither could another reptile veterinarian that I consulted with. So our veterinarian, Dr. Pfaff, has put um, the word out to her veterinary colleagues and she's asked if anyone has encountered this and she's trying to find more information about it. But as of right now, she hasn't encountered this before. And so we are just playing her treatment and recovery by ear and doing the best we can with no other available um, cases to refer to. So I will definitely be giving you recovery updates and let you know if we discover any more available information. The reason I believe there's probably not information about this particular condition is because I think unfortunately it's not common for people to take their snakes and other reptiles to the vet. I'm sure that Rosalie is not the only snake that this has ever happened to but I am sure that many times snakes regurgitate and people never take them to the vet and they continue to regurgitate and die and people never find out why. And so if the animals are not taken to the vet and diagnostics aren't done, then the veterinarian's not able to discover the cause of the regurgitation or other issue. And we aren't able to then document occurrences like this one where this cardiac artery was entrapping her esophagus. I'm sure that it's happened before in other snakes. We just don't know about it because it's not been reported. So please take your animals to the vet, take your snakes to the vet. If something's wrong with them, if there's a behavior change or obviously they're not feeling well or if they're regurgitating, you need to find out what the underlying cause is. And the first thing you should do is eliminate a medical reason. If you take the animal to a professional and you have veterinary diagnostics done and you don't find anything wrong, then that's one thing. Then you can address husbandry or behavior or other things, but you've got to make sure that there's not an underlying medical issue causing the problem. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.